Mr. President, Madam Speaker, distinguished members of this General Assembly, Governor Reynolds, state officials, colleagues, family, friends, everyone who joins this morning. One of the simple pleasures uh, in my life was the opportunity to drive my daughter to her grade school in the morning. It did not occur often enough, but enough to produce a lasting memory. Not from any words spoken, but from the moment spent watching her walk from the car to the door of the school to disappear inside for the day but never before looking back to see if I was still there for her. Everyone is dependent upon the support of others, and each year the courts look to you for your support. Not just your financial support to maintain our current level of services to Iowans, or to keep our courthouse doors open, but consistent with the expectations of Iowans, support for our court system to continue to innovate, to be a part of transformational change, to be the very best we can be. Our founders built government for all Americans to grow and to be better than we once were, to form that more perfect union and they created a court system to work to this end in perpetuity. As from the beginning, the court's role in this pursuit of being a more perfect union is to advance justice through decisions made to resolve disputes. Yet this goal, this goal can also be achieved as much, if not more, by changes made to the process of justice or changes to the way we do our work. As with any successful business and industry, a court system today must constantly examine the way it does its work, ask if better ways exist, and incorporate proven new ideas and technology. This is what Iowa's court must do. So, as we begin this new year, the Iowa court system pauses to look back at you for your support. We look back with a deep appreciation for the support that you have shown to us in the past. And we look forward with hope for your support that will continue to grow in the future. Iowa's court system is at its best when your support allows us to provide a level of services needed to best serve Iowans. Let me share with you some examples of how the changes in our court system that we are currently making to the process of justice is working and is improving the lives of Iowans. Beginning with the services that we provide to Iowa's children. Juvenile court judges and juvenile court officers continue to serve the needs of children and families, and stories of new success continue to emerge from our juvenile courts, our diversion courts, and our family treatment courts. These stories confirm that the innovative approaches to delivering justice that I have highlighted to you over the last few years are working. These stories show how thoughtful changes to the process of justice can transform hope into real opportunity for more children and their families and save millions of dollars to taxpayers. Better outcomes are achieved when the process of justice not only holds children accountable for their actions, but holds them accountable to overcome the problems responsible for their criminal acts without 
imposing unnecessary burdens that only hold them back. Juvenile courts and diversion courts continue to keep more children out of the formal court system by using community-based programs to address their needs and hold them accountable for their actions. While some children need to face the full force of the court system, we have learned that most do not. Most children only need a process of justice that best assures that their potential will be discovered and achieved. This is what the process of justice must be for all of Iowa's children. One such juvenile program located in Polk County is called Too Good to Lose. It's the only court program in the state and one of the few in the nation exclusively devoted to the challenges faced by teenage girls. All of the girls in the program committed criminal acts. All have turned to drugs. Some are mothers. Yet, they are all Still children, children who too many times look back for support that was not there. Children too young to understand that they had also become victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, human trafficking. Children in need of a process of justice that sees them as too good to lose. The mission, the mission, the mission of Too Good to Lose is to ensure that these girls are safe, remain drug free, receive an education, give back to the community, and heal. Since March of 2016, 17 girls have entered the program and six have now graduated. The success of the program can be attributed to the unique bond between the judge who oversees the court, the juvenile court officers who supervise the girls, the women from the community who come into court and share their experiences, and the girls themselves who now have people in their lives they can look back to for support. After I attended a graduation ceremony last November, the girls in the program sent me a thank you note. One wrote, thank you for joining me on my journey. Another wrote, you rock. <laughs> well, I'm not sure of the meaning of you rock. I inquired. I inquired further into the meaning of the journey I had joined that day. And she wrote about it in an essay with these words. Depression slowly crept into the night and I began finding myself drowning in my own tears. While restless, I was having no motivation to get up in the morning. I was on the verge of giving up. I was unbelievably close. I was so out of control that I began to have legal problems and was on probation for using substances. Home wasn't any better. And I believe at that point I did give up. I didn't care what happened to me. I was just reckless, falling into a deeper hole before I knew it. Today, today this young girl is on track to graduate from Too Good to Lose and from high school with college in her future and dreams to pursue. 
Her journey is our journey. To Too good, too good to lose. Too good to lose needs to become a movement. A movement that can begin in Iowa. A movement that sees every child as too good to lose. We must not stand by and allow any one of them to be left behind. This is what the process of justice must be for all Iowa's children. Too Good to Lose is part of a commitment by our court system to build a comprehensive process of justice that not only holds offenders accountable for their crimes, but when possible, gives them the tools to overcome the problems behind the criminal conduct. When rehabilitation is achieved without imprisonment, justice is advanced and the expense of incarceration avoided. Currently, 47 problem-solving courts are operating in Iowa, including 20 uh, adult courts, four mental health courts, and one veterans court. The mental health court in Scott County has been operating for just over a year. And in that short time, 19 individuals have successfully participated in the program. All of the individuals are connected with a doctor and are medication compliant. For these offenders, this achieves rehabilitation. This court is a small but important step in addressing the mental health needs of Iowans who have violated the law. It also shows how improving the process of justice leads to better outcomes and how expanding courts statewide would benefit more Iowans. It is also a step that shows the benefits of avoiding the expense of attempting to treat mental health needs through incarceration. In its brief existence, the Scott County Mental Health Court has generated a cost avoidance of over $300,000. This is what the process of justice must be for all Iowans. <clears throat> we continue to explore ways to improve the process of justice to achieve better results from the criminal justice system. In doing so, we have learned of the substantial and often unnecessary collateral consequences for Iowans who are financially unable to pay their bail when arrested and have to remain in jail. These consequences include separation from family, loss of job, loss of housing, and much more. While bail must always serve to protect the public and ensure future appearances in court, it should never serve to incarcerate solely because the person does not have the financial ability to post bail. For more than a year, we have been working with the Department of Corrections to develop a new public safety assessment for judges to use in deciding whether to release or detain criminal defendants before trial. The assessment was developed from years of data and research by the Arnold Foundation. It is designed to assist judges in making evidence-based release or detention decisions. 
The assessment does not replace a judge's discretion, but enhances a judge's ability to determine the public safety risk of the person appearing before them. Other states using this assessment have safely experienced a reduction in jail populations and in pretrial crime rates. We expect similar outcomes will be achieved in Iowa. But most importantly, this approach is aligned with our pursuit to improve justice. Criminal offenders should be punished pursuant to a sentence prescribed by law, but not by unnecessary and unfair consequences of the process of justice itself. This This, this is what a process of justice must be for all Iowans. With every step that we take to improve the process of justice, we also make justice more efficient and less costly to Iowa taxpayers. Last year, Iowa's juvenile diversions pro program, programs diverted more than 10,000 children from the formal court system. These programs alone avoided more than $14 million in costs to other parts of the state budget. Family treatment courts served more than 300 families last year, generating a cost avoidance of more than $3.5 million in the human services budget. Other specialty courts avoided $4 million in costs. And these programs are all in addition to the $146 million the Iowa court system collects for the general fund each year. <laughs> last year, last year, the total return on investment in your court system was more than $178 million. Your your investment in the process of justice benefits all Iowans and taxpayers. <clears throat> Let me explain two additional steps taken last year to improve the process of justice. First in October, the Iowa Supreme Court formed a commission to find better ways to ensure juries reflect the diversity of each community. Juries, juries make decisions that have profound and lasting impact on the lives of Iowans. These decisions are improved when diverse thoughts and experiences are shared and considered. So is public confidence in the process of justice, so is the promise of justice for all. <clears throat> this, this is what the process of justice must be for all Iowans. Second, the Supreme Court issued a courthouse security order in June of last year to enhance the safety and the integrity of the process of justice within each courthouse. In December, the order was modified so our county partners can have greater leeway to assist in this mission. I just want you to know we are committed to working with you, with counties, with sheriffs, with law enforcement, and others to achieve the common goal of protecting Iowans who conduct business and work in our county courthouses. Courthouse security is inseparable from the concept of justice itself. While it is nice to report on our progress towards justice for all, I feel obligated to also report on our shortcomings. These deficiencies are 
not what Iowans expect or deserve. They are growing in number as are consequences. We must remember that justice ultimately comes from the people who work in the justice system. Today, the Iowa court system employs 182 fewer people than just one year ago. This is a 10% reduction in force. As expected, efficiencies gained through the integration of technology into our operations account for some of the workforce reduction. But we are currently operating with 115 essential positions unfilled, and this number is growing. This means there are fewer judges, fewer court reporters, fewer case schedulers, and fewer juvenile court officers. It means there is a daily struggle to coordinate and deliver services. It means Iowans are losing access to justice. Two years ago, I told you about our commitment that all cases would be timely tried on the date set for trial without delay. We have been forced to walk back from this pledge because we do not have enough people to do the work to keep it. So, the delays we were rapidly eliminating from the process of justice are returning and affecting your constituents who need our services to resolve their disputes. But that is not all. Today, Iowans who reside in rural areas are receiving fewer court services than Iowans in urban areas. Today, a freeze on new specialty courts exists. So the critical services provided by a specialty court in one county is not being provided in another county. And today, I am concerned all of this causes us to lose focus on the quality and the promise of justice. This is not what a process of justice should be. In past years, I have reported on the benefits of technology and how it's giving Iowan a better future and improving the process of justice, including our paperless filing system. Yet last October, the technology that supports the electronic filing system failed unexpectedly and could not be used for a week. This crippling situation resulted from an inadequate backup system which we know needs to be upgraded with better technology to prevent a future system outage. The outage meant that Iowans were unable to file or access court documents and judges were unable to access and work on court files. This must not happen again. This is not what the process of justice should be. These shortcomings and others are mostly the result of insufficient resources and the shortcomings continue to be revealed in new ways most every day. They are also beginning to tear at the very fabric of our operation and our mission. Ominous signs are appearing. This year, more judges will be retiring than in previous years. In the, for the last decade now, fewer and fewer private practice attorneys are seeking a career on the bench. Civil case filings continue to decline as lawyers and litigants choose to pursue alternative means to resolve disputes. This is not what the process of justice should be. And overall, the writing is on the wall. Our shortcomings and consequences have not gone unnoticed in the most recent ratings of the 50 state court systems by the United States Chamber of Commerce. In past years, I've been able to speak 
about these ratings to illustrate our success. Last year, Iowa fell from its proud position as the fourth best court system in the nation to 13th place. This is not the direction a justice system should be headed. And this is not how our process of justice should be seen. With your support, with your support, our shortcomings today can be opportunities to be a better court system tomorrow. We know additional challenges lie ahead, and with your continued investment, these too can be our opportunities. So, as we work to overcome our current challenges, we must also prepare to meet the challenges ahead. One challenge that can, can be seen is in the growing signs of the opioid crisis that has reached Iowa. Well, this will be a challenge for all. The Iowa courts must prepare to respond now. Court services will be a, an essential part to the collective efforts to minimize the loss of life and the devastation shattering families in our state. Fortunately, we know that family treatment courts and drug courts and other courts are up to the task. These courts, however, must be expanded and retooled to address the myriad issues confronted by family and children affected by this cruel addiction. This is what a process of justice must be. Not all challenges, however, are as visible as the opioid crisis. Cybersecurity is rapidly emerging as a vital issue for the court system. The electronic filing system that we have stores more than 20 million documents containing sensitive personal information, corporate data, and intellectual property. As in the private sector, courts need to invest in technology and take all necessary steps to ensure that Iowans' vital information is secured and protected against cyber attack and natural disasters. This is what the process of justice must be. Yet, the greatest challenge faced by the court system today is the unprecedented technological transformation shaping the way we communicate, think, and even live together. As in most aspects of life, it is giving rise to innovations and new industries that are displacing existing industries, even those that seemed impervious to change just a few years ago. The court system and the legal profession are not immune from this movement and will be challenged in significant ways very soon. Now the problem with Disruptive innovation is not the change that it brings, but the failure of existing systems to recognize it and adapt. The Iowa court system, like successful businesses today, needs support to integrate new technologies so the delivery of our services meets the expectations of Iowans. However, the Iowa court system we must always remember, is more than a business. Its constitutional and common law components are essential to our future and must never be displaced.
from my perspective, from my perspective, there could be no more important reason to support the Iowa courts or more compelling reasons. But the most important reason for supporting our courts can be illustrated by looking back at one of the most important legal cases in Iowa's history. So it is fitting that this year we celebrate the 150th anniversary of this case and its importance today. The case is called Clark versus Board of Directors. It was brought by an Iowan named Alexander Clark, who lived with his family in Muscatine. He turned to the courts in 1868 after his 12-year-old daughter, Susan, was denied admission by the local school board to attend the public school in her neighborhood. She was denied admission because she was born to African-American parents. A separate school was located a mile away for blacks to attend. But I think Alexander Clark must have seen his daughter too many times look back at him for his support when she would walk past the door of her neighborhood school. So he turned to the process of government established by our forefathers and asked the courts for help. The district court ordered the school board to admit Susan Clark to her neighborhood school and an appeal brought the case before the Iowa Supreme Court. The Iowa Supreme Court found the school board's decision was supported by the prevailing sentiment of the community, as well as many other communities, but not by the laws and the constitution of our state. The court rejected the concept of segregated schools for Susan Clark and for all children in Iowa. The court wrote, the court wrote that just as a school board could not require children of Irish parents to attend one school and children of German parents to attend another, or children of Catholic parents to attend one school and children of Protestant parents another, it could not require Susan Clark to attend a separate school for African Americans. It then, it then etched these iconic words into our history. All the youth are equal before the law, and no institution of government had discretion to interfere with or disturb that equality. The case, the case was a defining moment for Iowa and the nation. It occurred 86 years before the United States Supreme Court would follow in Brown versus education. 86 years. It, it, occurred, it occurred at a time when there was a strong public sentiment for segregated schools but a stronger commitment by our courts to uphold the rule of law. It was a, 
It was a moment. It was a moment in time that shined a beacon of light on the process of justice for all time. The, the last word, the last word written by the court on that day in 1868 was affirmed. It was written to affirm the decision of the district court, but it did so much more that day. It affirmed Susan Clark as equal with every other child. It affirmed all Iowans as equal. It affirmed a new public sentiment for the future. It affirmed the process of justice where one person can turn to the courts for justice and make the difference for all. So, the Clark case is not just a celebration of an important principle of law. It gives us an important perspective and understanding to see the promise and the value of our court system at this critical time today. And the best reason in the world to support our courts it gives us an opportunity, an opportunity now to reaffirm Iowa's commitment to justice today in a way that will allow generations 150 years from today to look back and to celebrate another defining moment in our history. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.